So here you can see they've been doing some forest cleaning, okay? Raking and cleaning the forest, just like you know who advised. Looks like they're just doing fuels medication. Maybe there was a fire that came through here. That might be the thing. I shouldn't make fun. Anyway, they get the little teepees built. Probably going to wait till fall to do it, I assume. I hope. Anyway, we got an understory of Arctostaphylos, Uva Ursi, some uh, uh, Opossinum, Androsema folium. Uh, we got some Campanula over there. And uh, even cooler, we got this uh, Mariposa lily, Calicortis gunnisonii. Look at all the hair inside those rounded petals. Rounded petals, pointed sepals, long-ass balls of anthers. And look at, look at all the hairs. Look at all the hairs on it. And then the nectary, of course. Where's that little crescent-shaped nectary down there? You could just see it down there. And it gets a little dark, like a little uh, darker green colored, huh? You know, just like you're going to Walmart to, to, to rob carts of Krylon back when you were a teenager, huh? And look at the color. It's glaucous green. Glaucous green, smooth, waxy leaves. Lancy little leaves, very linear. And maybe a little hint of a basal leaf or two down at the bottom. But you got that bulb down there in the ground. So hopefully when they're burning all this shit, this guy will already be done and dormant. Here we also got this uh, Penstemon gracilis, okay? Just looks like another boring Penstemon. I mean, I love all the Penstemons. I shouldn't say that. But a lot of them do look a lot alike. You really got to get in there and look inside that fucking bilateral Corolla. And when you do, when you do with this guy, you'll see he's got those purple anthers and a long-ass beard tongue, okay? Long-ass staminode poking out, all right? To get, make sure that bee... Rubs its back against those purple anthers, collects all the pollen nice, and maybe goes a little bit deeper and touches the style and stigma, thus pollinating the goddamn flower. Got a, got a small pedestal on there, and you also got the, it appears to be very glandular, very glandular flower. Let's uh, get, give some sun on that guy, give a little bit better lighting. Oh, yeah, look at that. Purple anthers, long stem and all, and glandular everything. Glandular everything, including the fucking Corolla. How about that? Look at that. That's some nice schist. That's some good schist. Okay? In the Black Hills above the town of Deadwood, South Dakota. Kind of close to Sturgis where they got that whole biker cosplay thing going on. Okay? Look at this. 1.5 billion year old schist. Metamorphosed volcanics. Look at the foliations. Look at the foliations in that, okay? The root, the root of the word foliar is a leaf, foliage. And these, that's basically what this looks like, a bunch of leaves, a bunch of pages of a book all cemented together. Look at it. You got micas. Maybe you got some biotite in there. Look at that. Look at, oh, my God. Oh, my God, look at that. Look at what's going on up there. 1.5 billion years old, like most of the Black Hills. Very old rocks here. Very old rocks, okay? The surrounding plains have some old rocks, okay? But if you're talking late Cretaceous, you know, maybe 80 million years ago when the dinosaurs were around, that's nothing compared to 1.5 billion years, okay? And good thing this is here too, because the flora here is not, <laughs> it's not too interesting otherwise. Not knocking it. it. was probably going off a month ago. looked great. But now, in the heat of July. But we got this. Look at it. We got the... Look at it. Look at it. Look at the sheen. The stress that this rock has been through. Okay? Definitely needs to shrink at this point. All right? The trauma. The stress. Look at it. I'm going to have to take a piece of this. Because this is a good example. You know? For teaching later on. When I get the wire draped over there, did that shit fall off there? Is it someone's cable? Huh? Maybe someone's uh, watching Judge Judy or some shit on this thing. I don't know what that is. Anyway, just wanted to show you that. Real nice schist right there. Real nice metamorphosed vol volcanics. Real nice foliation. It's a very old rock. Uh, yeah, hi everybody. This is Tony. Uh, today... We're here on, the, uh, on a, the White River Formation, okay? White River Formation is mostly a Eocene to Oligocene. So we're talking roughly 55 million years to uh, about 33 million years, okay? Okay, right when mammals were just diversifying. They were taking off. They were thriving. 
Remember the comet hits the Yucatan roughly 66 million years ago. Then you got the Paleocene. Earth warms up. Okay, Earth's pretty warm during this period. You got freaking uh, redwood forests up at a 70 degrees north latitude. And, uh, and then mammals diversify. You know, from this little tiny rodent called uh, Morganoconon. And then uh, suddenly you get the, now the dinosaurs are gone, the, the, the canvas is blank again. Mammals can take off, radiate, and do their thing. So, uh, Eocene's a wonderful time period. Okay, really would have loved to go back there. You can see we got some uh, feral horses down there, it looks like. Anyway, we're going to see what plant life is growing on these badlands, these easily eroding badlands. We got rain down last night, really beautiful thunderstorm. Okay, I was watching it on the radar as it uh, blew past us. Uh, today we got woken up by, by the prairie dogs, you know, frolicking and uh, screaming and what the shit. And uh, all of the, the formerly dry, powdery stuff that we were on had turned to this really thick clay that you stuck to the bottom of your uh, boots and tires, uh, you know, like it was a uh, freaking wet plaster. So anyway, let's take a look, see what we got going on. Look, you could see, you could see this, the, the landslide uh, waiting to happen, okay? You got some, uh, so you got some movement, you got cracks opening up, you got the uh, rainwater just slowly taking apart the landscape, and you got the uh, Juniperus scopulorum doing its thing out there. Beautiful day, going to be 95 degrees. Look, you could just see how easily this stuff erodes. Look at it, this is called sedimentary erotica right here. You got your opuncha, either macorrhiza or polyacantha. You know, sometimes I don't, the cactus people really can tell just by looking at the spines. And I can a little bit, but it's it's really hard. And it's at the point now where I just don't give a fuck anymore. I'm gonna be honest. I just, some of these these uh, plants are just too hard to figure out what you're looking. You get it down to genus, you're doing good enough, you know? But uh, it's no punches, so you don't wanna sit on it or put it in your mouth. Very hazardous terrain, okay? And he, uh, my favorite uh, personal injury attorney, ambulance chaser lawyers, in the Chicago or the tri-state area uh, would have a field day out here. I mean, you could really, you know, just uh, set up a shop in a parking lot, wait for people to get hurt, and then just approach them, you know, see if you got a case. What's this? Look at that. Look at this. It's some sandstone. It's not clay. It's like a chunk of sandstone. This stuff's been eroding for quite a while, so you just... Uh, you never know what you're going to find, just a plethora of different kinds of rocks. And not to mention uh, mammal fossils. It's just a fossil free-for-all. You know, that, that guy looks like a bunch of macorrhiza. You know, I worked with a, uh, I worked with a brakeman once. Looks like we got some bentonites down there. I worked with a brakeman once in uh, Sparks, Nevada. And he was, I mean, he had a plan to really go for the money, you know, go for the jackpot. He had a plan to get hurt. And I'm not sure if he ever followed through with that. I kind of lost track of him. It wouldn't have been, you know, granted, it wouldn't have been hard for him to get hurt because, uh, I mean, the guy weighed, you know, he must have weighed 400 pounds. But uh, that was many railroaders, actually. But, uh, you know, to, you got you got to have goals in life. You got to have goals. Look at that. That's a deep. Uh, see, so you could see this mudstone, this mud, this clay is pretty soft. The road's pretty easily, and then right there you got a little bit uh, harder of a layer of uh, of rock, it's of uh, perhaps sandstone. And so eventually this will be gone. Again, you got to use that. Uh, you know, so a, a kid's sandbox. You're just pouring a hose over a sandcastle. That you're just pouring a hose over. And just watching how those, but instead of just it all being perfect sand, maybe you put a layer of clay in there, maybe you put a layer of gravel in there. So the sand's gonna erode much faster than the harder stuff. Okay, and you can see this, these two layers right here are much harder. Uh, you know, relatively boring flora. You got your A triplex over there, you got the, your Chrysothamnus, Vesitiflorus, your rabbit brush. You got lots of creep, lots of movement down slope. Now you got a nice mud puddle down there to go take a bath in. But uh, overall, probably just, uh, if you already found a couple ticks on me, probably a lot of ticks and uh, not much diversity, which is just about what you would expect from the Badlands. But what you'd also expect from the Badlands 
is some buckwheats. And we certainly did find that Areogonum pauciflorum back up the way. There's supposed to be a very rare one uh, located within this general area as well. That is, a, it's an annual, so it only grows for one season. It's also slowly on the verge of being knocked off the map, being wiped out. There have been quite a few extirpations already. There was one from this area, uh, and it hasn't been seen in 80 years. But uh, maybe there's a couple more out there. Let's go see if we could find them. Yeah, you can see there's just a crevasse opening up right there. These buttes uh, will one day no longer be together. Very sketchy terrain. Break your ass terrain if there ever was one. It's all just dried mud. You just gotta hope it's uh, it's packed, it's cemented together enough. You can see here we got uh, Areogonum pauciflorum. Again, just thriving on these otherwise barren formations. You can see all the flies and what the shit going through it. Okay, shows you how uh, ecologically important this plant is. But otherwise, you just got a lot of invasive halogeton, some chrysothamnix, some uh, a, tri a triplex. You got your uh, old punches, your prickly pears up there on a ridge and what the shit. Oh, here's a bit of floristic diversity. Looks like we got a uh, mirabilis. We got a nick tag. Looks like it's uh, looks like it's almost all done. Bougainvillea family. Nick Paginaceae. Are these going on still? Mirabilis linearis. Opposite leaves, like a lot of the Nick tags. Waxy, glabrous, no hairs, and then uh, you got those betalane pigments up there in those uh, in the bracts in the bracts. Fortunately, not in flower. Now, now look at that. What do you think was going on there? Feels kind of heavy. Feels kind of like hematite. Okay, certainly iron rich. I right, probably just read distribution of iron uh, by water uh, in these sediments, you know? Water picks up, uh, you know, dissolves some iron, re-precipitates it, I always say re-precipitates, just precipitates it out somewhere else, and there you go. And it, when, it, when it hits a hard layer that it can't permeate through, a harder layer of sediment, that's when it dumps it out. And so it occurs in a, you know, those little plates like that, little flakes. I've seen that quite a lot. These little uh, plates of iron, it looks like. You know, Badlands, yeah, but you get the summer rain too, so it's a little bit more lush than the Badlands you might see in, say, uh, you know, a desert, especially a summer dry desert. Plus, we're a little uh, higher latitude as well. Now, see, we're reaching a, a look at a lichen on that. How about that? Now we're reaching a layer where all these rounded agates are coming out. So there was a river here at this layer, apparently. And now as the uh, sediment they're in erodes, they just uh, fall out of the hill all over the freaking ground. But look at, look how, look at how, look at how tumbled that is. Huh? That was in a stream, huh? Maybe uh, 30 million years ago. Sedimentary erotica. Look at all this. Look at all, look at all these, these agates. Agates around the church. Look at it. You look at this. You got the lichens all over the ground. You got Escobaria. Probably Escobaria vivipara. Because it's got the... See the red in there? See, it's got the red uh, uh, radial spines clumping like that. Just forming a little colony. Is it, are they actually all the same plant, or is it just that seeds aren't falling that far from an apparent plant? Got this artemisia down there. Probably got ticks crawling up my ass because I was I was crawling through some of those canyon formations, and you know there's there's all the brushy shit is all over the walls, and I, you know I know they're just waiting on there with their legs out, just waiting their their little their little claws out, just waiting to latch on. You look at all this. Look at all the gravels. And then there's none up there. So this was a stream in the Oligocene. Little, uh, little creek. No, it looked like probably was a big river. Who knows? Could have been a, a, a larger delta as well. Yeah, look at it. But you know, you know how you know how rivers work, right? They'll stay one course for a while. 
especially if it's a flat area like the Rio Grande does this you know when it gets uh, to East Texas stay a little way for a while then uh, you know it gets a flood hard rain overflows its banks ends up changing course maybe it was just doing it back and forth just meandering you know meandering back and forth but look at all this stuff where was it sourced from where did it come from originally you know back in the Oligocene maybe the Eocene I like this. This is nice areogonum habitat. These kind of bentonite clays. Notice how not very much is growing on it. Seems like the Escobaria is doing fine right there. See that? Pink flowers when they bloom. We're way past bloom, unfortunately. See, they got the fruits maturing right there. Quite a few. Quite a few doing very well for itself, especially with this little pavement of gravels. Okay, got to thank that uh, Oligocene River, that 35 million year old river. Look at all this clay stuff, just the, this popcorn clay seems like perfect areogonum habitat. Let's see, let's uh, we're going to try to go up this popcorn clay slope without falling into uh, any of the uh, crevasses. What do we got up top? Look at that. Evidently, it's uh, somewhat hard to grow in. There's some, uh, perhaps, nutrient restrictions. You can see how big the uh, Helianthus annual, annuus, excuse me, is getting. It's an annual plant. You know, this just grows for one season, so size is completely dependent on nutrient, as well as moisture availability, as well as just what that soil is like. So that's a, when this seed germinated, uh, you know, it, perhaps it could have been six feet tall or four feet tall. But due to where it's growing, uh, it's much smaller. At least that's what I'm guessing. That's a prob That's probably a phenotypic thing. And coming up here on the gravels, on the shiny gravels, the silica-rich gravels, the chertz and the agates and what the shit, we got a strange, a very strange pea. Look at that, just finishing up flowering. And look at the calices on those. All right, frilly, laciniate. You still got a flower on there. See, with those 10 stamens just poking out. You can see it's all, almost got the banner wings and keel right there. The banner wings and keel flower morphology. Kind of like a pinnate uh, leaves, of course. Odd pinnate. Looking like little hands when they're a little short. Just coming up on the gravels. That fruit texture is very notable, though. You can see these gravels kind of stabilize the ground, stabilize the substrate for stuff to grow on. There's that, uh, look at that thing. What a weirdo, huh? What a beautiful weirdo. Got your Escobaria, your punch of Fragilis. Is it Fragilis or is it the, uh, I don't know, who cares? It's not in flower. Those. Things can be so hard to see. And there's that, there's those fruit again. Look at that. Look at those fruits. Huh? Obviously, wind dispersal helps this guy get around. You could see that. Plumose calices. Plumose fruits. Just coming up here on the shiny church and gravels and what the shit. Look, you could see the glands. You could see the glands on a calyx right there. Look how deep that keel is as well. Concealing those ten stamens. You got the little style poking out, concealing the fruit. This plant has quite a fragrance to it as well. Very pungent. Probably uh, the Amorphia tribe. A little green inside that uh, banner as well. Just coming up in a bunch of gravels at the top of the butte. Boy, it's really getting hot. Feel a little lightheaded, like I might pass out. Oh, look, we also got a uh, Montiacious bastard. Look, same family as Bitterroot. Look at those uh, succulent uh, little finger-like leaves right there. There's the inflorescences. Those pink flowers just about finishing up. There's the fruits right there. Little green balls, little green capsules. 
Seeds must be tiny. Again, just coming up on the gravel's nice. Little finger leaves. That succulents, of course, it's caryophyllales. Same order as the cactus, beets, ice plant, spinach. What the shit? You get the betalines in there. Of course, that succulents enables it to do so well on a dry site, on top of the mesa up here. If you can see, there's another one. See that? See that guy? Small flowers on this. They're mostly done. Mostly done. It, uh, that weird fabid and that weird amontiaceous bastard wasn't expecting that little bit a uh, little bit of a habitat change up here where you get all the silica gravels stabilizing the substrate okay kind of acting like a rock mulch nice rock mulch there's this guy again look at that Oh, he's got relatively large uh, basal leaves. Not basal, but uh, proximal leaves. There's the fruit. Is that a fruit already maturing? Yeah, right there. Really distinct uh, calyces, though. And that fruit is just uh, hiding within. Pretty interesting uh, plant habitat up here on top of the Badlands. Got this astragalus right here. Okay, these, uh, this particular group of a stragoli, I just made that word up, are uh, selenium bioaccumulators, which makes them uh, give off a, quote, snake-like odor when you crush them. But of course, oh yeah, it does, it smells pungent, it smells like snake musk. But of course, you would only know what that is if you've actively handled the snake before and had it uh, spray a bunch of shit out of its uh, cloaca on you. And then, uh, you know, probably in the same tribe is that the weird pea we were just seeing. Of course, we got your good old Dahlia purpurea, your prairie clover. Amorphia tribe. They got the glands. A lot of them do. They got the glands. Very pungent. Interesting little uh, habitat up there. Huh? Lichens on the rocks and what the shit. What are you doing? Why are you, what, what's going on? You know, you guys keep me up at night. Just, no, hey, I know you're not injured, man. I'm not going to fuck with your nest. I just want to know. Hey, come here, please. Can we talk about this? Seriously, what's with the thing at night? You keep me up all night. I was trying to sleep in the back of the truck. All right? You know what I'm doing in there? I'm sharing that back with two dogs. And they both smell like hell. I mean, I smell like hell, too. You're really not going to talk to me. Please. Please? Hey, come here. Come on. Come on. I'm not, I'm not coming at you like that. It's not aggressive. I just want to, come on, please. Now, you know, I should mention, I really don't mind when he's doing it, okay? Or perhaps she, I don't mind when he's waking us up at night, you know? And, and what we're doing right now is exactly what it wants us to do. It's trying to lead us away from the nest. See, faint injury, the kill there do the same thing. See, now we're far enough away. Now it's like, okay. Just, I'll just marinate up here. Watch you guys take off, and then I'll, uh, I'll go back to my offspring uh, once you're far enough away. You know, I gotta say the biting flies are a nice touch. Okay, if we're, I mean, just if we're going for, you know, how irritating and uh, uh, uncomfortable it can be uh, to be looking for this plant. You know, the biting flies are good. That's a good one. Didn't see that one coming. What, what a bizarre plant community. Look at this. Then right here on the gravels, it's so wet enough for there to be moss. Now moss can, of course, just completely dry out. It's wet now because it rained last night, but it could just completely dry out. And I'll wait for the next rain. But uh, the fact that it's even here, there's that weird uh, Montiacious bastard again. Look at it. Right on the gravels. Boy, the, uh, the cicadas really uh, are enjoying this cottonwood. It's such a pleasant sound, you don't hear very much west of the Rockies. They just had the 17 year uh, explosion of these in the Midwest and you hear all the reports about these idiots trying to spray them. <laughs> just in effect, poisoning the entire food chain on up. This Badlands Habitat, it's really getting hot now. A few miles down the road, you can see we got a Mazilia here. 
I don't know how to fuck these things bloom when it's uh, so dry. There's Ariagonum pasiflorum, of course. Doing fine up there. More Menzelia. Of course, we got your Halligaton. Gotta have your invasives. Sprinkling of cottonwoods out there, too. How do you like that? We got a Penstemon albitis. Long past flower. Looks like got your Calicordus as well. You know, I think I think on these 95 degree days when you gotta go botanize, you gotta go look for some plants, just, you know, just walking around in circles staring at the ground, it's good to bring a, a beach umbrella. I think I'm gonna do that from now on, you know? Just a giant beach umbrella, sure it might act like a sail, you know, and carry off, but you know, that's not too bad either. It's not too bad. Lots of Ariagonum pasiflorum. Lots of Penstemon albitis. Oh, look, we got a fertile area. But uh, none of this annual buckwheat. But the seeds could be laying in wait. You know, that was nice. I needed a good wild goose chase in 95 degree weather with biting flies. Look at that, we got a little uh, Oreo carrier. How about that? Seen about a million of those in the last, uh, maybe not this particular species, but a million of these in the last few days. There's the other uh, Dahlia, Candida. Much different from that Dahlia anteater we seen earlier today. Anyway, you know, we searched at about six or seven different sites for this plant, for this rare annual. Couldn't find a single one. Look at that, it straggles. And it's, uh, actually that might be an Oxytropus. And we couldn't find anything. So, you know, it apparently doesn't want to be found. Look at that, oh, look at that nice Asclepius speciosa. With the bee's ass just right in there. Just coming out the mud. Is that Delia Candidia again? So, you know, I don't know what to say. Maybe this thing's extinct, who knows? Maybe it's just laying lotus here. You know, it's an annual, so it lives for only one season. And, uh, but the seeds are out there. You know, some years, uh, you know, the populations will fluctuate. You'll have a few hundreds. Some years, you'll have thousands. But we looked everywhere. We couldn't find anything. You know, the biting flies, the 95 degree heat, they make it a little hard to uh, look for this stuff. So, uh, sometimes you just got to give up, and it's fine, too. But hopefully you got to see some uh, some weird shit. Look at these damn, look at those badlands. You know, these this whole formation, these are only about, you know, 500,000 years old. So half a million years ago, this was all flat. These weren't even here yet. And now it's just slowly eroding and probably in a, in a million years, they won't even be here anymore. So actually not slowly eroding, it's, it's, it's eroding pretty fast, but uh, Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you got something out of that, even though we didn't find our target plant. Ariagonum vicheri. Looks like a storm's brewing behind me. Oh, yeah, look at that sky. Look at the color of that. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Yeah, that storm should be starting any minute now. Look, it's the Sclepius uh, verticillata. Look at those linear leaves. Just the faintest, the, the faintest little hint of a white line. Some white uh, cuticle right there. Tiny flowers. See, you could see this kind of bentonite popcorn clay that Ariagonum pasiflorum is growing on. No trouble at all. It's doing a good job. Look at that. So we do have a pretty strange adaptive situation, as you can see. All right, contrast nicely with that storm that is now moving away from us. 
We also have an interesting little Fizaria right here. Interesting little Brassica. Little mustard. See the bladder pods right there? Look at that linear leaves. Perennial, maybe a little bit of a, the base of the leaves are a little paddle shaped. Look at that. Well, I spoke too soon. That storm is uh, actually above me right now. I'm getting rained on. But you could see, look at that Fizaria. How the, how the hell does it grow in this? Huh? Tiny little bastard. There's the fruits right there. See, it's just completely, uh, completely covered. Just forming little uh, little colonies. Of course, uh, evenly spaced with all the other plants that area are going to pause the florum. The chrysothamnus. The astragalus back there. The roots from all these plants probably spread out at least a foot from where the uh, vegetative tissue is. Hey! You got no reason to talk to me like that. Hey! What do you do that? Why do you do that? Why do you make that noise? I don't care. What what are you what is he doing up there? What are you doing over there? What are you doing over? You wanna to go to Menards with me? Huh? Let's go steal a power washer. Look at it. That's that's all their little city. Their little prairie dog city. Okay, so you can see there was a problem at the homestead. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what happened. But uh, obviously it wasn't very nice. I just hear prairie dogs everywhere. Could be the prairie dogs. Maybe the prairie dogs were the result of all this debris everywhere. Okay, in effect that the home's abandoned. All right, might have been an orchestrated effort uh, to remove the homeowner on the part of the prairie dogs. Could be that. But whatever it is, uh, you got this euphorbia marginata everywhere here. You know, poinsettia family, okay? Waxing with the shit. Real waxy. Real waxy leaves. And look at those inflorescences. Those white things on there, those are the bracts. Those aren't those aren't the petals. Very simplified, very simplified flowers here. No petals. No petals at all. You got the cyathea. Singular cyathium. 